Hello everyone, and welcome to the 15th video of the Angular Portfolio website course. In this video, we will be building out the last part of our site, which is the contact page. If we take a look at the finished site, we see that the contact page consists of two sections, both of which are pretty straightforward. We will also add in social media icons in our site header during this video as well. Let's go to our project. Navigate to the HTML template for the contact component. Let's replace the filler text with a div that has the class container. Inside of our container, let's create a div with the following classes. This will serve as the first section of our contact page. Inside of it, let's add an h1 element with the text contact. Below that, let's add a paragraph element that has the following text. We will wrap the email itself in bold tags to emphasize it a little bit more. Let's add one more line below that with the following text. Let's go to our site and see what this looks like. We now have the first section of the contact page. Next, we're going to build out the second part of the contact page. Let's go back to our project. This first part was pretty straightforward. This next part, although a little more complicated, will be fairly straightforward as well, especially when compared to earlier parts of this course. To build out the next section, which is essentially a list of social media links, we will be utilizing the list group classes that come with Bootstrap. To get started, let's add some space below. And let's create a new div that has the classes list group and shadow. This div will contain the list group. Next, let's add an A tag with the following classes. This A tag will be the first list item in our list group. In this case, the first link is for a LinkedIn page, so I'm going to set the href attribute to point to our LinkedIn profile. Since this is just a template site, I set the link to just LinkedIn itself. However, you should change that to link directly to your profile page. Next, let's set the target attribute to underscore blank. This will cause the link to open up in a new tab. Inside of this A tag, we're going to add two things. The first will be an image. This is going to hold the logo for the site we're linking to. In my assets folder, I have added logos for each of the sites we'll be linking to. I'll include a link to them in the description. Or alternatively, you can grab your own logos, especially if you're using a different site. Set the source of our image to point to the logo we'll be using. Let's also manually set the width and height to 32.
then let's give our image the classes of rounded circle, flex, shrink, zero, and margin end, five. Below our image, let's add an H3 element, which will contain the name of the site we're linking to. In this case, we're going to add LinkedIn. Let's also give this class margin bottom zero. This is everything that's needed for a list item. Next, let's copy this two times for our other two sites. Then change out all the relevant details so that they link and represent the other two sites. Let's go to our site to see how this looks. Our list of social sites is complete and is functioning properly. If we click on one of these, it will take us to that site in a new tab. At this point, we're almost done. The last thing we need to do is include social media icons in our header, so let's do that now. To do this, let's open up the HTML template for our header. Within our Jumbotron div, let's add a few lines and create a new div. For this new div, let's set the style. We're going to set position to absolute. Let's also set bottom to 5 pixels and right to 10 pixels. Lastly, let's jump to our Jumbotron div and set the position to relative of the Jumbotron itself. Now, let's jump back to our contact HTML template. And let's copy all of our A tags, then go back to the header's HTML template, and paste them within our new div. We're going to need to make a few changes here. First, let's get rid of the classes for all of the A tags. Next, let's get rid of all the H3 elements. Then, for each image, let's change the width and height both to 24. Then, for the image classes, let's remove flex shrink from all of them. Then change margin n5 to margin n2. That should be all the changes needed. Let's see how this looks. We now have a small icon set in the corner of our header that persists regardless of which part of the site we're on. And that was the last step of building out the contact page. We are officially done. This will be the end of this video. In the last video, we'll wrap up the course and give my final thoughts. Feel free to continue along to that video now. Thanks for watching.